So we've been um, looking at all those qualities that um, we want to develop in uh, in in our team while right? we are building our team. Um, these qualities are very uh, important. Would really help us in uh, the team uh, functioning well, right? Uh, um, and also uh, help the team to accomplish things, right? And it depends on each of these, uh, each of our team members to have these abilities, right? To build these abilities, to nurture and grow these ab abilities, right? So we're looking at um, uh, ability number nine, point number nine, which is which is enthusiasm, a general interest, a general passion for things um, at hand, or for the work at hand, for the ministry at hand, wherever you want to apply. You know, is the team enthusiastic about it? If the team is not enthusiastic about it, it could be uh, for several reasons. You know, it could be there could be several reasons why. One is maybe the purpose, maybe the vision uh, is not clear, right? Or it 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 used to be. Uh, you know that they had a s strong grip of the vision because the vision always uh, stirs up a passion and right? if the if we are you know aligned and if we are inclined with the vision of whatever we are going about that's why you know the team actually came together in the first place um that is why somebody you know uh, applied or wanted to be part of the team um so if the vision is clear, you know we maybe we, we we might have to revisit that purpose, the 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 big question, the big why. Why are we doing this, right? So when when that is uh, you know revisited, and when there is clarity about the why, then everything else will you know again flow again. If the enthusiasm had gone down, it'll just you know come back again. And uh, yeah, so uh, so that's the, that's one thing. The second thing is um, you know to giving ourselves, you know, giving ourselves some some deadlines or some finish time to finish the you know some of these tasks, and right? giving ourselves a realistic finish times or deadlines. Uh, maybe we have we are, the team is doing a task and we are in, we are all each one is you know doing a particular task. Give give some deadlines realistic but at the same time something that will stretch us you know, something that will give a sense of urgency right uh, okay it's this thing i need to finish i can't just take like forever and ever and ever to finish this task but i need to finish it by the end of this week you know having a day and having a, a date and a time in in place really helps right uh, well, the task, a particular project could have several tasks, you know, several phases, several tasks, um, uh, subtasks. So each of these, if they have a deadline, you know, if, they, if you say, okay, by this we need to finish it, then there is a sense of urgency, right? We are able to put other things aside and uh, get into it. And that also um, uh, enables us or uh, gives uh, enthusiasts, enthusiasts the team. Uh, so, uh, again, coming back to uh, enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm is a choice, it's a decision right, that we make. It's not dependent on, you know, I will wait for these feelings to come, I will wait for the right environment, right circumstance, um, everything to fall in the right place, and then I will be enthusiastic. No, that doesn't happen that way, right? So we need to be... We need to make a choice. We need to make a decision saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to be interested in what I'm doing. I might as well do it. And and having that enthusiasm actually helps us in the journey. Right? It makes the journey better. It makes the journey uh, easier. It makes the journey pleasant. Uh, whereas if you're going to be constantly, if you're going to be grumbling, complaining, uh, and dragging our feet, then it is it's going to make the journey you know, even it could be a you know simple task, but it's going to make the completion of the task a real nightmare, right? a real drudgery, not only for ourselves, but also we're going to make it you know like that for the for everyone else. So, so be uh, enthusiastic. Um, it's a choice. It's a decision, right? Um, so when we are enthusiastic, we really believe in what we're doing, right? So, so that helps. That's the whole point of 
revisiting the purpose, the vision, and so on. Okay, so uh, be willing to do more, go a second mile for our teammate, you know, just for the sake of helping others. Um, and even as we strive for excellence, uh, it it and and accomplishment. You know, when we when we finish a task, that itself enthuses us. That it itself generates even more interest in in what we're doing. Right. So, uh, so getting the job done. Uh, because if we if we just keep things hanging, keep things incomplete, um, then there is a lack of interest. Right? Oh, this needs to be done, but I've not completed it. There are so many things to be done, but I've not started it. Right? And that further creates a negative pressure. You know? So we we are not uh, interested in it. We just keep thinking about it, and the very thought of it makes us heavy and heavy hearted or just weighs down like a you know like a big burden and we don't get to it so when we actually start doing the tasks and, and so all this helps us in our enthusiasm when we start doing the task and then finish it right it builds enthusiasm so you know enthusiasm in the team enthusiasm for every team member uh, you know can we develop it can we intentionally build it and model it for them right um, okay, then the tenth one is being intentional, working with a purpose so that uh, every act or every task that we do, making it count, you know, making it intentional. Okay, so there are, um, you know, so focus is, is something that that needs, um, that, that is required for us to be intentional. You know, focus, what is focus? Focus is to, you know, to, to look at something um, to, I'm trying to avoid the use of the word focus. You know, to look at something, to to be engaged in something, um, to the exclusion of everything else. Now that is focus, right? When we say oh, this person is very focused, which means that they are zeroed in and staying on one thing, and they are not looking at all the other things, the peripheral, the periphery. You know, uh, not. We're not looking at all those things because if we look at all that, then we might get distracted and lose our focus on what is important, on what is necessary. Um, so, yeah. So the the thing is focus. To be intentional, we need this ability to focus, right? And to do the right things and to follow through to finish. Okay. So, yeah, what will help us in having this focus is to explore, to see, okay, what is my strength? What is my limitation? What am I good at? And, uh, you know, uh, how can I how can I develop the ability to overcome these limitations? Because these are things that pull away our focus, right? And when we have these tools, like, okay, we plan, uh, we put things in a calendar. We have these to-do lists, and we prioritize. Okay, today I have this to-do list, but this is what I'm going to start with first. Okay, so this helps us to focus. It helps us to narrow down, because if we don't have a plan, if we don't have these lists, so we we tend to put our energy in everything else, whatever is urgent, or whatever wherever there is a fire. Uh, you know, there is a problem. That is where we are drawn to. We need to put out the fire. We need to solve this, you know, the problem first. Okay. Uh, well, some things are urgent, and then some things are not important. Right. So we need to know: is it important and urgent? Right. If it seems to be urgent, but it's it's not very important, then maybe someone else can handle it, and not me. You know? So priority, prioritize. So it helps bring that focus and we can be intentional okay so john c maxwell says okay let 80 percent of the time be focused on what brings brings the highest return to the team so that we model it and we also build that learning or this um what we want the team to follow you know put to practice in their work in their ministry saying you know let it be focused on what brings the highest return meaning what is it that that uh, you know? What is your contribution, your effort, that where it's really necessary, where it's needed, and where we see the uh, fruitfulness? 
Okay, so to reflect, do I do this myself? Uh, what steps do I need to take in order to be intentional? Right. So when we when we have these tools, when we use these tools, um, maybe it's a you know Outlook calendar, maybe it's a Google calendar, maybe it's a simple you know like a physical calendar where we write down uh, and also a daily to do list. Right. These are things that I need to do it because so these are important and these are necessary. Uh, if I don't do it, you know, uh, these will have consequences. So we are being intentional. Right? Uh, we're not just floating through the day, uh, doing whatever you feel like doing or whatever grabs your attention. Because if we have that mindset, we might miss out, miss doing, or miss out on doing or accomplishing or finishing certain things which are. Um, which are valuable, which we need to do, right? Okay, so intentional. And, uh, you know, continuing with that is focus or conscious of our mission. You know, this is similar to, uh, you know, being intentional, similar to, you know, what will help us in uh, enthusiasm and, and so on. So we just, you know, what are we are conscious of, or the team members are conscious of the big picture, right? Um, so what is it that the team needs to accomplish now? That, let that be priority rather than individual or my own right, accomplishment. Or let that take precedence. If this is what we need to accomplish as a team, right? Um, allow the leader of the team to lead. You know, if there is a designated leader, let the leader lead, don't hinder the leader. Uh, and for the team to win, the leader must be allowed to lead, right? So do whatever is necessary to achieve the mission. Okay, so being conscious of the mission, the big picture. What is it? The, the, what is the big goal, right? Okay, then another thing is preparation, right? So we know that every um, you know, for every accomplishment, for every win, there is uh, preparation. Right? Every task to be done well, preparation, right? Um, so where there are certain things that we have the skill for, you know, the ability, there are some natural things that, you know, I mean, there are certain things that come to us naturally, right? And which are our strengths. Uh, so despite that, so what happens is like when we when certain things come naturally to us, maybe we are gifted in certain areas, then then we compromise on the preparation time, right? We say, okay, this is something that I can wing it. I can wing it, meaning you know, I can spur of the moment, I can actually do it. So we compromise on the preparation time, right? But it becomes, uh, it bec it carries a cost, and sometimes. Um, the cost is, you know, it's a difference between winning and losing, right? So preparation, irrespective of where our strengths lie, where we are gifted, you know, preparation is, like John C. Maxwell says, preparation is battle that is half fought. It's 50% is you've crossed you know, the journey when you prepare, right? When we assess, when we align ourselves, when our attitudes and actions, everything comes together you know, in our prepare, in a preparation, uh, then it is actually 50% done. Half the battle is won, right? How can I improve this, you know, to be prepared? Um, so think in terms of process, okay? So think, think in terms of process. When we're preparing, when you're preparing for a, uh, for a project, when you're preparing to, uh, you know, complete, uh, uh, or maybe it's some outreach, everything, you know, whatever it is, think in terms of the entire process, start to finish. Okay, how do I need to start it? What is the goal? And uh, how am I going to, you know, accomplish it? Think in, think in terms of steps or processes, right? So we break down that big uh, objective into uh, smaller steps and each step into smaller tasks excuse me so that's the thing you know to have a process to think in terms of process and it becomes second nature 
right when we think about when we think in terms of process so we don't we won't start somewhere in step five or step six we won't start start doing that step five or step six but we start from step one right so because we we're, we're thinking in terms of the process oh, just excuse me Um, okay. okay, so um, so we, we can find ways of, you know, how can I improve, uh, find some tools, um, and uh, also evaluate, assess, okay, what are things that went right, what are the things that didn't go right in the last time, and so, you know, these are things that help us to become, to have a process mindset, right? Um, you know, it's a, it's a simple process, uh, like, uh, uh, okay, let's say making tea, you know, simple process, making tea, and goal is to have a hot cup of tea, okay, so we would, uh, we would need water, we would need tea leaves, we need, we would, you know, need milk, if you're you know, typically making an Indian cup of tea, uh, you know, then milk, and then there's sugar, and so on, right, so, so we, Take the water, we put in boil the tea leaves and uh, bring it to a boil. And so this that's the process. Right? So we won't start with uh, step four or step five. You know, if step one is to take the you know water and uh, and to step two is to add the tea leaves and step three is to make, bring it to a boil, we won't, you know, we won't start with step three and we or you know, which will actually hinder uh, the uh, the preparation time. Right, hinder the preparation, hinder the outcome, right? So that is what we say, you know, when we, to, be, to think in terms of process and to follow through, to follow the, through the process to get the things done, right? Okay, um, so preparation. So is everyone in the team also preparing? Right? So when we model it and when we teach, then we see that okay, everyone is also, you know, able to prepare, uh, able to uh, do that. Um, okay. Um, then we uh, we look at the next one. Okay. So the thing is, um, so we're looking at what are the things that we are studying. We are looking at uh, um, uh, things that we want to see, abilities that we want to see. We want to build in a team, every member in the team, so that the team functions well. Okay, one thing. The third thing is um, point is that are my team members relational? Right, um, relational meaning are they just like we saw? Okay, are they communicative? Are they communicating within the team? Are they withholding information? Are they sharing information? Uh, you know, so we need to. We need to actually ensure, facilitate that. Are they relational? Relational, you know, means that okay. Are they respecting one another? Is there disrespect, dishonor? Then we need to deal with that. Are they respecting? Is there, you know, shared experience among the teammates? You know, whenever there's a win, then there's a shared experience. If you're if you're playing with a team or like a playing a game like football or cricket, there's a, there's a shared experience. Hey, you know, you, you did this and that was funny, or this was a difficult time, and then you you know you came in and this person did that, and we we actually won because of that, and that was a great goal. And, you know, so there are shared experiences in the tasks, in the challenges. So um, shared experiences, you know. So it, it it requires one to narrate those experiences also, to share that with the team. Uh, when the team is together, and uh, and different people can do it, right? Not just the team leader, but the others. But to make sure that hey, these are our shared experiences. These these are some things that we treasure. Right? We don't uh, we don't just rest on those memories so that it's just one memorial, but these are helping us. These are helping us to move from where we are. This is helping us in our journey, where we we, we cherish these memories and we move on. These are actually strengthening us, right? Um, and helping 
the whole dynamic of relationship within the team. Okay, share experiences over time, um, and also trust. Now, does the team does the team trust each other? Now, trust can come uh, only because where every if everybody is performing, if everybody is dependable, right? If people are not, it's interconnected, right? So, if there's a problem with trust, then there is a problem with uh, dependency. Right? They're not able to depend. There's somebody who is not dependable. Right? They are not pulling their weight. They are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. For whatever reason, so you know, as team leaders, we we need to see that, spot that, you know, and then get that person up to speed. Maybe it's encouragement. Maybe it is something to do with the skill level. Maybe it's something to do with the, the attitude. Right? The skill is there, but there's no attitude. Right? Um, the attitude is wrong. Maybe so. So that that will help uh, increase the dependability, and therefore there can be trust. So when there's trust, then definitely relationally the team is is relating to one another better. Like they're able to get along, go along, and a team that is that has strong relationships is a strong team. It's definitely a stronger team. If there is strife, if there is suspicion, if there is uh, you know people don't see eye to eye. Then it's just a matter of time. It could be a very skilled team, but you know everybody is doing things for themselves, and they're not able to wholeheartedly like do their tasks uh, because they're not able to trust the other person. There's suspicion, and so the team becomes weaker and weaker. Right? So yeah, so these are some things. Um, so we can ask the team members, you know, what are the goals? What are your desires? What are your dreams? In order to build that thing relationally, right? um, what really helps is also being able to meet or being able to spend time with the team outside of the formal work setting. Okay. So, in ministry also, you know, maybe there is a formal, you know, time where, where the team is meeting. Maybe in terms of preparation. Maybe in terms of practice. Maybe for you know that formal time of. You know, getting together for praying for something. So that's all. You know, that's an agenda. Um, but if there is a time, and if we can facilitate a time outside of that formal setting, right? If there's a time to just just relax, the time to just spend with maybe the team members, family, and so on, you know, that will help the team build this relational aspect, being able to relate to one another. So, so that's something that, as team leaders, we can help facilitate, and also we can help build in the team. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Any practical experiences? Anything that you might want to share? Um, yeah. Okay. If there's anything, please feel free to share. Right. Okay. Okay, so the next, uh, next one, self-explanatory, which is improving oneself, like constantly improving oneself. Now, if, if we improve, then the team improves. If we improve, then uh, the whole output of the team improves, right? So, um, so we commit to that. We commit to that. So every, if everyone commits to that, if everyone commits to improving oneself, um, whatever they are, Therefore, in the team, they are improving their output, right? what they are responsible for, what they are there in the team for, their role in the team. If they improve what they are doing, then the output is different. Uh, I mean, output is better. It is uh, it is of higher quality and so on. So, um, so the thing is, am I improving myself? Today I'm at a certain level. So tomorrow, um, and the day after that, and the next time, you know, am I improving myself? Right? If I'm at the same level, you know, what is the reason? Am I, am I just, you know, drawing back or whatever? Uh, maybe the interest is not there. What is it that is? You know, we need to challenge ourselves, right? 
we need to ask ourselves and and also to look at this whole thing of improving oneself as as a commitment to do it over a period of time right? to make it a lifestyle okay to make it a lifestyle this whole thing of learning this whole thing of improving oneself to make it a lifestyle really right um, because you know when you especially you know when you look at uh, you know somebody's health or fitness you know, there are two ways right one is you commit to a lifestyle of you know good health and fitness or sometimes it can be a quick fix thing like this fitness maybe you know just like typically how we you know some of these examples we've seen like one goes to the doctor and says okay doctor i you know i need relief from this pain and the doctor says okay you need to make lifestyle changes right so that this doesn't come again uh but you know it's going to be a everyday thing it's going to be a monthly thing a yearly thing and it's going to be for a life lifetime right? you just need to make those changes adapt make those changes to last a lifetime right so self improvement is like that it's not just for a 100 meters dash it's not just you know saying that okay i will do this and then forget about it right so uh, we need to we need to do that you know, learning to improve one oneself you know there are different um, reasons for for people to change one is that they are hurting that they have to change okay or they learn enough they get the revelation and they want to change or they receive enough strength and skill that they have the ability to change right so we need to understand that the change happens in these ways uh, some people are desperate for change and they are hurting and they're saying okay i can't take this anymore and i want to change you know, in the second case people learn get their understanding get their revelation and there is that inner desire and conviction i want to i want to change so people change in all these ways uh, but you know the first one if people are hurting that they have to um well what sustains that would be the second and third right if if people come to that place saying okay i have to change i'm hurting this is not helping but if they learn more receive a revelation receive strength in order to change then they will sustain that change right okay. so something some minds uh, said is to be open to learning new things asking questions listening um having the attitude of a learner to be interested in things around um to learn new things um and uh, just like how a child has a sense of wonder you know if you for the child uh, you know right from from the you know if you look at babies and right from their um you know the time as toddlers you know, they are they are just so curious right and their eyes are you know, full of wonder because they are discovering new things every day and right? discovering oh wow this is this is what it feels like so oh, this is hot this is hard this is soft you know everything they is learning from the environment okay this is how the taste is you know oh, they never tasted sugar before they never tasted anything sour before and then they are they hits their senses and they are discovering so um they are actually learning they are more open to learning new things right uh, then we you know we come to a stage you know they're learning new words they're learning they want to try out these words if you see some of these you know 6 year old 7 year old they are trying out these new words they learned in school maybe they want to try out in the conversations at home you know words like uh, uh, actually you know maybe they learned that they like that word and they're saying you know there are a lot of actuallys in their conversations actually i did this actually i did that they want to try it out right so we need to be childlike in our in our learning and in our wanting to try out you know that's uh, where are we looking at this we are looking at self improvement right self improvement improving getting better at what we are doing what we are you know in ministry also right so getting better at whatever we are you know whether it's preaching teaching whether it's uh, 
uh, whether it's other things, ministering, and you know, we're getting better at it. We're learning, understanding what are the things that I need to avoid, what are the things that I need to, you know, uh, get into, spend more time, and and all that. So, uh, it's good to be open to learning. You know, don't reach that ceiling. Let's never reach that ceiling where we say, okay, I'm I'm closed. I don't want to, you know, or be cynical. You know? That's the thing we we say. Okay, that person is always like that. What's the use? You know, the question we ask sometimes is, uh, tell us is what is the use? You know, that's a place of discouragement. It's a place of cynicism. You know, so let's never reach that stage. May God, may the Lord keep us that state of being fresh and being sensitive and having that sense of wonder now, with Himself like with the Lord and uh, the world that he's created and with the people that he's created, right? So have that. So learning new things. And we can also intentionally plan out progress. Okay, Some of the things that maybe it's a course that we want to do, maybe it's conferences, maybe it's some refreshing, uh, sorry, refresher workshops. Okay, we've heard those things a long time back, but now, uh, well, can we just build on that, right? Maybe some workshops. Um, some things like that, so we can plan you know, to attend, to be part of these things. Um, that helps us improve as well. Right. Okay, so we have uh, like three more things to look at. Let's uh, go through that as well, and then we'll open up for some questions. Okay, to be selfless. Right? This is a quality, uh, an attitude, um, because it's it's all about the team, right? So to be generous, to avoid internal strife in politics, to be loyal, and to be interdependent rather than in independence. Uh, be interdependent, you know, just like what we see in 1 Corinthians 12, the body, the image of the body, the members, are to be interdependent. What will actually increase our selflessness, you know, that dying to the self, is when we give secretly, meaning we help people, we empower people, and uh, it is not that we uh, we want accolades, we want you know applause, but we are um, uh, we are actually doing it irrespective. We just want to be silent contributors, right? silent contributors, irrespective of who gets the credit. Right? We don't want to be in the limelight. So when we do that. It uh, it helps, right? It helps increase that selflessness. Okay. Uh, we can sometimes take a subordinate role, right? Maybe we're always uh, at the helm of things. Maybe take a subordinate role and say, okay, I, let me help you with this. You know, this is not what I normally do, but let me help you. you know, this is let me help you carry things. Let me help you set up things. Let me help in you know, putting away the things, washing up, right? So let me let me do that. Um, then, um, then to be uh, you know to promote others, like to notice, to compliment, to recognize, and also to move others, maybe in places of prominence, maybe things that we were we ourselves were doing, and um, so yeah, so do that so that increases selflessness okay um so how will that help a team member and that's the question right if i'm selfless how will that help the team you know if if the team member is selfless selfless how will that help well being in the team uh many things that we do as a team requires giving requires receiving um and especially requires giving without asking that question, what's in it for me? What is the benefit that I get? Okay. If I pass the ball to him and he's going to score the goal and he's going to be known as a score goaler, I mean, as a goal scorer, or maybe the highest goal scorer for this tournament, then what's in it for me? Okay. Sometimes if we... Or if we have that mindset, if we if we keep have asking that question, then we're not going to contribute. Right? We're not going to help the team. As a result of which, the team suffers. 
Right. So the selflessness is an important quality for us to develop and also for the team to develop. Okay. Okay. Be solution oriented. Okay. Well, many of us notice problems. Problems are there and they well, you cannot help but notice problems. You know, when things go wrong, people notice. Right. When things are like recently I was at a I was at a conference yesterday and uh, and things were like the speaker wanted to play a video, two videos actually, and the uh, the media team was not prepared at all. In fact, I noticed that as uh, you know they were projecting the lyrics for the worship so the media team was not prepared at all uh, they were you know we will just be singing the next song and then we'll be still in the previous song trying to figure out this is despite you know the lyrics being given everything was given in advance and they were not prepared these videos obviously were given in advance but they were not prepared with the audio they're not prepared at all mm -hmm. right so the Problems are something that we can that just come up noticeable, easily noticeable. But what about the solutions? Right. Um, so, am I a solution-oriented person? If I'm finding fault, can I also suggest the solution? So, you know, I'm saying that don't find fault at all you know don't it's not like okay that's a there's a problem here there's a problem there no problem no that's that's okay right as long as it comes from the right heart right attitude there is this problem and you know there is this solution and it can actually be helpful right there's a you know, that now that's a better perspective right like henry ford says you know don't find fault find a remedy so which means that you notice the fault but also you go with the remedy. What will change that uh, problem, right? Um, so, so we need to think of a solution in a challenge rather than problem in circumstances. You know, the different mindset, right? So problems can stop us. They can stretch us. Depends on how we approach it. So how can I be a solution-oriented person? Here are some things. If there's a problem that was given up you know, solving, you know, saying people are saying, okay, I this is this problem is beyond solving. Then try taking it up and doing it on your time. You know, try to solve it. So it's for the sake of the organization, maybe it's sake of uh, the church, you know, find a find a solution for it and uh, try to solve it. Okay. Then um, so refocus the thinking on just not just finding the problem, not just dealing, I mean, but also dealing with the problem, right? Uh, rethink strategies, uh, repeat certain processes. You know, a uh, uh, classic example of that is, uh, you know, um, an experience I went through. And this is uh, at uh, at a certain venue where we used to meet this uh, school. And uh, so this is an example for revisiting or repeating the process, you know. So I went, found out, asked for permission at a certain time whether whether we can use that venue for a for a church service. They said no. The principal at that time said no. We can give you maybe on one or two days or a or a set date, but we cannot give it to you for every Sunday. We cannot give it to you throughout the year, you know, fifty-two Sundays or plus other additional service. We cannot do that, right? So we just left it. Okay. Uh, then after maybe three years or four years, um, there was this need again. We needed a venue. So um, what came to our minds was, okay, this was the response of this particular school. You know, they they responded negatively. They didn't want, they were not interested. Um, so now we have this problem. We have to solve it, right? So can we revisit? Can we try again? This is what they said earlier. But what if things had changed? What if the management is open now? What if the principal is open now? What if they are, you know, they are open? So we went again, right, and uh, approached them again and said, well, "Well, you know, we have this. We know that we came earlier, but you know, is there a possibility? 
Now this time they were open. They were, this time they were open. They were also, I think, as a strategy, they were giving out their venue for many things, right? weddings, programs. So they were open. They said, yes, we can we can discuss, we can talk about it. And then that's how we went into you know that venue, church venue. So repeat processes. Like maybe the circumstances change, the things have changed. So you can try out the same thing which we failed at earlier. But now maybe we are doing we can repeat it and try it out and see, right? So to be so this will help us to be solution oriented. Okay. Another quality, be tough, be tenacious, don't give up. Now work with determination, not waiting on destiny. Um I, I you know this is uh, this I see in one of the in one of the gyms nearby. It says stop when you are done, and but not when you are tired. See, a great thing, you know, great motivator, inspire. Stop when you are done, you know, when you finish, uh, and not just when you are tired. Right? So going all out, uh, hundred percent uh, will really help. It will help you, you know, it will help us know that there are resources that we never thought was was there in us. Right? It's only when we are stretched and all that toughness and tenacity comes out. Right. So don't give up. Um, be determined. Go all out. Okay. Um, so we need to work harder. We need to work smarter. So working harder would mean okay, maybe physical strength going at it over and over again like a hammer. But we can also work smarter. Right? Rather than use a hammer, can I use any other tool? Right? That is working smarter. Right? Can I, rather than breaking this thing, can I use something else which will dissolve it altogether? That is working smarter. Right? So work harder, but at the same time work smarter as well. Right? Um, and stand for committed values, the values that you had committed to. Purity, punctuality, integrity, like morality. Um, to be ten tenacious, to be tough. You know, these values that we are holding in high esteem. You know, don't compromise on that, right? And uh, well, sometimes what helps is to make work a good nature, you know, competitive, not competition to bring down the other, but um, you know, like a like a game, uh, like a sport. Um, that will also enable us to be inspired, motivated, and to be tenacious, not to give up, right? So these are some things, uh, 17 points that we looked at uh, for our teamwork. And uh, all of these are in that book, Winning, um, Winning with People. Uh, sorry, it's it's in um, the Laws of Teamwork, the Indisputable Laws of Teamwork by John C. Maxwell. So you can... Uh, check that book also. So with that, we come to the end of uh, um, you know this course on leadership. So we looked at those three big sections: um, teamwork being the last one. Then we looked at winning with people, and the first one was about you know uh, about leadership uh, with Jesus as the example, and and several other things: vision, goals, uh, you know, and plan, a personal plan, and, and so on. We looked at all those things, right? So that brings us to the um, yeah, yeah, the end of this course. So um, so any questions, any um, anything, any, any, any other thing that you wanted to ask, maybe um, maybe some practical things. Um, you know, when we look at these 17 qualities uh, that it seems like you know, how can I recruit someone with all this right how can I recruit someone with, uh, with all these abilities it seems like like too much to ask for in a person right well it's it's true right based on the person's experience uh, that you want for that particular role based on the skill level learning etc uh, it's too much to ask right to see that uh, okay somebody will have all these qualities and somebody's just doing great in all this it's uh it's too much to ask for right but it's good to just run through right run through uh, in our interviews maybe uh, maybe a question will actually address three or four of these characteristics 
bring out three or four of these characteristics, ask that question, and um, evaluate. You know, is are these qualities there, or you know, how critical are some of these things for the job at hand, right? And to intentionally build that in, to intentionally voice that out and say, this is something that we require. Right? These are abilities that we require to intentionally build that, right? Because um, to, to build that, to build the team would mean you build people with these abilities that would contribute to teamwork, right? that would contribute to the team actually winning and going forward. So uh, we can consciously develop these uh, abilities, right? Okay. So any questions, anything? Um, so Christian leadership, there'll be one more quiz uh, before the end of this month. And with that, we will uh, come to a close. Also, you know, like just like uh, how we did for the other course, um, Inner Wholeness, um, this course also, there's a feedback form. I think some of you uh, have not filled for the previous one. Uh, I would encourage you to, uh, you know, it's a, a feedback form which you can just fill in just to assess uh, and to give your suggestions, your feedback. It's an anonymous uh, feedback form, so you can, you know, uh, you can just go ahead, be free, and, uh, you know, give your feedback about the course, the faculty, the assessment, everything, you know, um, the good, bad, and the ugly. So you can share that. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, if there are no questions, uh, I guess we'll stop here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, God bless. Just look out for the uh, feedback form and also for the quiz. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Buster. Right. Bye-bye. See you, John. Bye.